So let's talk about blood sugar. Now this picture, when I saw this picture, I know it might be a little small. I hope you guys can see it, but um, it baffled me. Now if you look at those um, on top of the, the, um, the picture, I'm sorry, you have all the bottles of the different sources of um, liquid. You know, we got a water, it looks like we have a chocolate milk, some type of soda, and it goes all the way up to one of those big gulps. The bag underneath it, that white stuff, guess what that is? Sugar. So look at how much sugar is in a soda and a big gulp versus how much sugar is in a water. Almost nothing. But a lot of people out there, you know, drink two, three, four bottles of, of or cans of soda a day. And look at how much so sugar is in just one of those bottles. And now you're putting that much in your body on a daily basis. And no wonder you're degenerating in your health the way that some people are. So what is blood sugar? When we ingest some type of food, good or bad, our body breaks down that food into glucose for energy. Next slide, please. So a well-balanced diet, in which we're going to talk about today, helps to keep the blood sugar at an optimal level because fluctuations in our blood sugar is not good for the human body. Unfortunately, what I call the all-American diet, it's basically a diet that a lot of Americans go on, or at least eat. Um, it's rich in sugars, sodas, carbohydrates, and processed foods. And when you have a diet like that throughout the day, all day, every day, that actually has your blood sugar start to fluctuate high and low throughout the day. And a lot of people end up starting to eat a diet when, I'm sorry, eat food, not diet, eat food when their blood sugar is low. So they eat when their blood sugar is low, they get this spike of blood sugar that keeps them energized for maybe an hour or two hours and their blood sugar starts to come down. That's when they need that coffee or that, you know, that cookie or that, you know, sugary drink to bring back that blood sugar up. And that's like a diet that, I'm sorry, that's a lifestyle that a lot of people are starting to, to, uh, to get into. And that's on, very unhealthy for the body. You know, so if you don't address this, um, you get to start going down what we call the diabetic cascade, or that's what I coin the diabetic cascade. So what the heck is the diabetic cascade? You've probably never heard of that. So it starts with, like I was talking about, this fluctuation of blood sugar. So we call that reactive hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia means low blood sugar. Um, but reactive means it's going up and down, like it's reactive based on what you're eating at the moment. Then we have insulin resistance, that's the next step, and then we have your diagnosis of diabetes. So the diabetic cascade, like we just said, reactive hypoglycemia. Um, it's caused by unhealthy diets, skipping meals, diets that are higher in carbohydrates, processed foods, and sugars. And I want to go over the skipping meals because that is it enormously important to talk about. Because I know a lot of people, and I admit to myself, I am one of them in the past. I'm now not doing this, but a lot of people skip breakfast. And that's one of the worst things you could do for your body because how you start your day is how the rest of your day is going to start going. So if you start your day with no fuel, you're not going to get through that day with energy. You're going to start fluctuating up and down with energy because you're not going to have that fuel to start you through the day. Um, so if you are somebody that skips meals or you know ha doesn't have breakfast, has a little bit of a lunch and only eats a big dinner, these, this is probably something you're going to start to see. You know, Reactive hypoglycemia is one of the most common things that people go through and they don't realize it. And a common sign and symptom that you are going through this, and some of you guys may laugh at this, but if you know that person out there that when they're hungry, they are not fun to deal with when you're around them. They become very naggy. They become very, like, um, you know, on edge, like they're about to snap at you any second. If somebody's like that, that person is actually going through hypoglycemia um, at that moment. You know, their blood sugar is so low, they can't even – really focus on anything else but just getting food in their body because they need that fuel. Um, it's funny and we laugh at it, but 
but that's the first step to this diabetic cascade. So I'm sure some of you guys out there are laughing right now. I'm sure you guys know somebody that you're thinking about, um, but that person is going through this reactive hypoglycemia and um, getting on a more well-balanced diet throughout the day is actually something that would change that person's life. Um, so then if this never gets corrected or the person just continues down this path of reactive hypoglycemia, the next step is what they call insulin resistance. Now insulin resistance um, is exactly what it says. The insulin starts to become resistant to the sugar and what insulin does is insulin actually takes sugar out of the blood and brings it to the tissues of your body to give it energy. Unfortunately, if there's this fuel or this rush of sugar that's constantly coming in the body, the insulin no longer can work enough to get that sugar out of the blood and the blood sugar starts to slowly raise upward. And that's why sometimes people could say they're pre-diabetic or they're going towards diabetes. This is exactly what's happening. The blood sugar is slowly rising, slowly rising, slowly rising because that insulin can't get the sugar out of the blood because of the diet that they're on and the lifestyle that they're living. So if this never gets corrected, then we finally get to a point where you get that medical diagnosis of diabetes. And all that means is that your blood sugar reached a certain level, which is normally um, over 200, I believe it is. Um, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Don't quote me on that. But um, once you get to a certain level of blood sugar, it's, um, I'm sorry, it's 100, not not. 200. Just thought about that. But um, if you get your blood sugar to that level and above it, you get the diagnosis of diabetes. But you don't get diabetes overnight. It's not like one day you're not you're not diabetic and then you wake up the next day and you go to the doctor and you get a blood work and they say, oh, you're diabetic. We have to do this, 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 and this. This is something that has progressed from when you were probably young and you've eaten a certain like uh, dietary lifestyle you've lived a certain lifestyle that didn't allow your body to um, control that blood sugar and it just slowly raised over time. So that's what I call the diabetic cascade and it's extremely important to understand because you could stop diabetes well before it even starts to come around by just making some lifestyle changes. Um.